Am I live? All right. Well, hey, welcome everybody to uh, Calvary Chapel Online this Sunday morning. We are so glad that we get to do this together, even though we can't do this uh, in person. We are glad that we continue to be able to worship the Lord, seek His wisdom, and apply His truth. So we're glad that you're here with us today. Um, we would love for you to you know, comment on this video. Uh, you know, if you have questions, you know, we'll be responding to this as, as the live uh, broadcast goes out. Uh, we also love to see pictures of you guys social distancing. So if you've got some great pics, put those in the comments, and uh, we just love to see you. Uh, it's so hard for us not to see each other, but we know that we're together uh, in prayer and in the Lord. So we're glad you're with us this morning. Uh, we will We'll continue as this uh, situation uh, unfolds to do Wednesday and Sunday services online. So we'll be right back here on Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. and next Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. You can find us here on Facebook or YouTube, whichever platform you're using. Uh, next week there will be premieres, uh, so there'll be a way to set a, a reminder uh, probably by Saturday, so that you can can know when we're going to go live. So we, uh, we're we excited about the ability that we have in this uh, current age to continue worshiping together like that. And we also, just on that vein, want to continue encouraging you guys to be growing in your spiritual walk. Uh, there's so many uh, sources of information and opinions and ideas coming out uh, through this occurrence, but we need to stand on the eternal solid foundation of Christ and His Word. Uh, so we just want to challenge you to continue reading. You know, Wednesday we challenge you to be reading through the book of Genesis. Once you continue that, uh, we'll have some other ideas out for you this week, just some ways for you to continue to study God's Word and connect maybe with other believers in our congregation and in our world as we do that. So just be watching. We'll post a lot of that on Facebook. We'll also have a newsletter going out this week with some of those ideas. So just be checking back often as we continue to try to encourage you. Uh, and then lastly, if you just have a need uh, or just need prayer, we, we just want you to know that we're here for you. We want you to contact us. You can contact the church office. Uh, our phone number is 417-345-6418. You can contact one of the pastoral staff. You can send us a message through Facebook, and uh, we'll get back to you just very quickly uh, and try to help you if there's any way that we can. Uh, so again, we're just glad that we get to do this together this morning. And so I'm going to begin us with a word of prayer. So if you would just bow with me as we uh, ask God to be with us this hour. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us, Lord, that, that no matter what we face, you promise us that you will be there and that you will go with us and you'll give us your strength and your wisdom and your guidance, and Lord, we need that in these times. Um, and Lord, some of the hardest things are just the unknowns, Lord, but we know that you're an all-knowing God, uh, an internal God uh, who knows the end of this, and so Father, we just want to trust you to lead us and guide us through this time. Lord, we pray that you would also just continue to help us uh, to encourage others with these same truths. Lord, show us ways that we can offer this hope uh, to others. And Lord, even as we have needs or we know that our neighbors have needs, help us to know how to can come together uh, in your name and help each other through this time. Uh, Lord, we pray for those in our congregation who uh, are uh, in those high-risk factors, Lord, that you just keep them safe during this time. Lord, we pray for those in our congregation, Lord, who are having uh, difficult times right now. Lord, we uh, just pray that you be with them and give them extra courage and extra encouragement and extra faith in this time. Uh, and Lord, just help us to continue seeking you and, uh, and trusting you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I did want to mention we uh, are continuing to try to keep our prayer list updated. We'll be posting some things later today, just some people that we want you to be praying for and encourage you to just keep praying for our leaders, uh, for our community, and for our world at this time. Uh, but right now, we're going to uh, get a special treat. Uh, Randy and Betsy have joined us this morning, and we're going to sing a couple of songs of worship and praise and just remind us that the, the God is the same and has always been the same, and these words will st still ring true today. So you might even want to stand up as a family and sing along with us this morning. So we'll turn it over to Randy and Betsy. Good morning. We're going to sing Amazing Grace first. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. Did 
saying majesty this morning. Good morning, and we're so glad you're tuning in with us, and this is different. I'm preaching to a camera, and no one's here except for just a few people. We want to tell you we love you, and we're praying for you, and, and our world has changed drastically in the past few weeks, but the Lord hasn't changed. He's the same today as he was yesterday, and as he will be evermore. We're in quite a predicament. I remember, I believe it was 13 years ago, we were in a great predicament here in our, our community. We had the great ice storm, and, and all of a sudden the stores were closed, and we had all of these people living here at church, and we were trying to feed people and clean up and do all of these things. And, and God led us, and we got through those things. And now we're in uh, what I would consider probably the biggest challenge of my life, maybe uh, your li I know it's your life's too, and now we're in this pandemic of this uh, coronavirus. I want to remind us, though, that this is not permanent, that it will come to an end, and God is still with us, and the Lord is still giving comfort and strength. Also, we've kind of come up with a little theme for all of you and for our church family. Uh, we're here to offer hope and help. 
You see, we have this wonderful opportunity to offer hope in Christ to our world and to our community, and also to offer help in Jesus' name. Well, we're going to look today at uh, the Red Sea. We're going to look at a journey that the Israelites were on, and they were caught in quite a predicament. Uh, they were right between the devil and the deep Red Sea, and all of us are going through some difficulties right now. We're, uh, we're socially isolating, and this is very difficult. But if I can take you back uh, to before, uh, you know, when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, God had finally opened the doors for them to go to the promised land. And they were excited because not only were they going to the promised land, but the Egyptians had, uh, they had given them gifts of sort and they had taken things. And so they were leaving Egypt with all of this wealth. And they were just so happy because they were on the way to the promised land. Slavery had ended and, and they had been blessed. You know, just a few weeks ago, uh, we counted our blessings and our 401k plans were just doing wonderful and people were traveling and people were having a good time. But the one thing so many people were not doing was looking at the Lord and remembering Him. So this is an opportunity for us to, to make some changes in our lives. But as they were going on this journey, all of a sudden they quickly forgot how God had delivered them and now they saw their first predicament. You see, Pharaoh had changed his mind, and he was chasing them with his most elite troops. The chariots were there. They were like our modern tanks. And here they were, and they were in this predicament. There was no way for them to go. And from a human perspective, they were in deep, deep trouble. I guess if you look at things from a human perspective today, we're in deep, deep trouble. But aren't you glad that uh, God is still in control? You know, from the human perspective, uh, we don't do very well. When we walk by faith, though, not by sight, that's how God has always wanted us to live. And during this time, I'd like to just remind you, we walk by faith and not by sight. Before they had this Red Sea predicament, God was leading them. The Bible says in Exodus 13, verse 21, by day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night, neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. You see, God led them, and he went before them. This is pretty incredible. This is, this is just wonderful things that are happening here. You see, there was never a time that the Israelites weren't without God's presence. By day, they followed the cloud. By night, he was a fire that would lead their way or protect them from any enemies. And there they were with God's presence, and now all of a sudden things are beginning to change, and, and they're in trouble, and they don't, instead of turning to God, they turn to themselves, and they said, oh, woe is me. Well, I want to remind us that they had that cloud. The cloud told them when to move forward, and they moved forward. When the cloud said go right, they went right. When the cloud said to go left, they went left. When it backed up, they backed up. When it stopped, they stopped. It was clear as a bell. There were no questions, nothing to decipher, just follow the cloud. At night, you could see the cloud, and God transformed himself into a pillar of fire so that he chased away all the wild beasts in the desert, and he kept the people warm, and he gave them guidance. You know, I want to remind us all during this difficult time, we don't have that cloud, but wouldn't you like to have that cloud? Who do I marry? Well, follow the cloud. Where do I need to go? Well, follow the cloud. Where should I work? Well, follow the cloud. What should I do during this pan this, this crisis that we're going through with this coronavirus? Well, follow the cloud. Cloud. But you know, we don't have the cloud, but we have something even better. You see, we as believers have the Holy Spirit of God. And this is a time to remind all of us that the Holy Spirit of God can lead us and guide us and strengthen us and give us comfort, and we can depend on the Spirit's leadership. Well, we're going to share with you some strategies to go through these experiences like we are when we're between the devil and the Red Sea. And I'm going to take some of the points from Robert Morgan, his book, The Red Sea Rules. It's a wonderful book that if you don't have in your library, you need to get. But first of all, we need to realize that God means for you and I to be exactly where we are. In Exodus 14, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposed Baal Zephon. 
Christians should not be surprised when in seeking God's will, we find ourselves trapped in sometimes painful and frightening and difficult or impossible situations. You see, life is hard and life is difficult. And sometimes it's especially difficult for Christians during times of persecution. But God is with us. When you and I are under God's leadership, as we are those of us who know the Lord, you are where uh, you are by God's appointment. You see, God knew about this way before we ever knew about it. And so he's not taken by surprise. And so we're right where we should be. We're also in God's keeping, and we're under his training. And there are some lessons that we should learn through this. And we're in this for his time. And we don't really know how long this is going to be, but God does, and God's in charge. Number two, we need to be more concerned for God's glory than for our relief. In Exodus chapter 14, verse, 13, verse 3, it says, Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, God said, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all of his armies, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. You see, God can take an impossible situation, flip it around, and use it for his honor and for his glory. Now, God doesn't often deliver us in our time frame, nor how we expect him to do it, but God will deliver. And number three, we need to acknowledge your enemy, but keep your eyes on the Lord. You know, our enemy today is an enemy we can't see. It's a virus, but we can see the effects of that virus. And if we put our eyes on all of the troubles and not on the Lord, we are in trouble. But we need to focus on the Lord. In Exodus 14, verse 5, it says, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariots made ready and took his army with them. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the chariots of Egypt, his officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped. One of the things that we need to do so much is something that all of us can do. I, I, I'm a worrier, and we're going to talk about that next week, about anxiety. But, you know, I, someone once told me, why pray when you can worry? That's not what we should do as Christians. It should be why worry when we can pray. In verse 10 in chapter 14, it says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified, and this is what they did. They cried out to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, our president last Sunday called us to a national day of prayer. It's just not a national day of prayer. We should be continually in prayer for one another and for this world and for opportunities to share Christ. And number five, during these kind of predicaments like we're going through today, we need to stay calm and confident and give God time to work. In verse 13, it says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. There's enough be not afraid in the Bibles for every single day. He said, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Wow. What wonderful advice. Number six, when unsure, just take the next logical step of faith. In verse 15, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Well, we're never sure what's going to happen a year from now, but the next step is often more or less obvious than when we really think about it. So in facing any vexing problem, we need to make up our mind prayerfully and take the next logical step of faith. Sir William Osley said this. He said, our main business is not to see what lies dimly in the distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand. I love the words of Jesus. And Jesus said in Matthew, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Number seven, we need to envision God's enveloping presence. In verse 19, it says, Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, 
The cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. You know, the Israelites were, were frightened, and you'd be frightened too. And you know, I'll be honest with you. There's some great things to be really concerned about with this virus. But we need to lean on the Lord and not be fearful because God's presence is there. The Israelites saw this physical cloud. It was in front of them. It went behind them to protect them. And they were in the light and the Egyptians were in the dark. Brothers and sisters, the people who don't know Christ are those people that are in the darkness. And what a wonderful opportunity we have to bring that light of Christ and that hope that we have in him. How can you master the practice of the presence of God? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. First of all, we need to affirm his nearness in your hearts. I pray that even right now, everyone who's watching this, God will just manifest himself in a very special way. And I pray that he will just speak to our hearts words of comfort and words of strength. We need to visualize God's presence in your mind. We may not see that cloud and the light and the darkness, but it's there. And just ask God to illuminate our minds and to see that there are angels all around us protecting us. And we need to access God's nearness through prayer. We can't stress enough how important prayer is during this time of isolation. And we need to reflect his presence in our demeanor. We shouldn't go around being sad and downcast. Yes, there are some people that, have, that we know here at church that have extended family that the coronavirus has, has affected them in other states. And that's a very difficult time. We've had some sadness in our church. We've had a couple deaths. But in all of this, death for the Christian is a victory. And we know that. But I want to just remind us that we have the hope in Christ. <clears throat> I love what uh, Mrs. Kennedy said once when she was asked about all of the tragedy that beset them and how could she smile. And she simply said, after a storm, the birds sing. So why shouldn't we? Number six, we need to trust God to deliver in his own unique way. Let's look at verse 21 in chapter 14 in Exodus. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and on their left. I think if I would have been there, I would have kept my eyes straight forward. What a dramatic, wonderful miracle. Does God still do miracles? Yes, he does. Does he still deliver people from financial woes? Yes, he does. How about marital problems? Absolutely. How about emotional confusion? How about harm and danger? How about self-destructive behaviors? Our God's big enough to deliver us from all of those things. And disease? Absolutely, God is able. But we must have God's perspective on deliverance, for he always views things differently many times as we do. Number nine, we need to view our current crisis as a faith builder for the future. Let's look at verse 30. That day the Lord saved Israel with the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses, his servant. Faith is simply finding and claiming the promises of God in every situation and based on those promises, making logical assumptions, being fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he has promised. God has tested and built the faith of the Israelites. He simply said to them, let's see if you can apply my promises to your problem. Our faith grows when we choose to apply God's promise to today's problems and use the experience to mature us for tomorrow's challenges. And number 10, and lastly, don't forget to praise him. In chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Then Moses and the Israelites sang the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horses and its riders have been hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. One of the reasons God puts us in tough situations or allows us to be there is to give us an opportunity to sound forth his praises. He expects our gratitude for our deliverance. In closing, I'd like to just remind us all of four timeless truths. These are truths that will always be true. Number one, 
It takes tight places to break lifetime habits sometimes. I know that uh, as we experience this, it should bring us to our knees and bring us to the Lord to intervene for our families and our friends and for our worlds. Often, we as Christians become very complacent with the world. And often, our culture influences us instead of us influencing our culture this is a time as we're with our families and, and many businesses have been closed and you're all together. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to develop family worship in the newsletter that's be coming out this next week. We're going to give you some helpful hints on how to have family worship together. It's a time for us to regain some of those spiritual disciplines that often we forget. The importance of prayer, the importance of Bible study, the importance of witnessing, the importance of meditating on the Lord's word. The importance of just being still and knowing that God is God. We need the Lord's help and we need his leadership. And number two, when him done on all sides, the only place is to look up. You know, when we look down, all we see is the ground. But when we look up, we see the glory of the Lord. And I want to tell us all today, if you're out there, stop looking down and start looking up. If you're here, if you're out there and listening, just take a second and just pause for a moment and just look up. And maybe even lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. You're in charge. And number three, if the Lord is to get the glory, he must do the fighting. This is the most difficult lesson but it's the most helpful of the four. If you truly want the Lord to get the glory, <clears throat> and that's just not lip service, you must let him do the fighting. Obviously, there are times and places where you and I must get involved, and sometimes you are part of the answer. I'm not referring to those times. I'm talking about those impossible situations when we're between the proverbial rock and the hard place, and God has placed you in that predicament with no escape. God is still there. And we need to make sure that he gets the glory. And lastly, number four, Red Seas open and close at the Lord's command and not until. I've had a lot of people ask me from the onset of this, do you think this is real? And I said from the onset, I believe that it is real. I believe that we should be very concerned. I know that we have our families and friends and all of these things that are going on. So it's very concerning. But I can't tell you when this is going to end. But I can tell you this, as we go through things, God is not going to leave us nor forsake us. I'm so thankful that we can cast our cares on the Lord because he cares for us. And in God's time and his clock, you know a clock sometimes is one of the greatest detriments to a life of faith because we look at the clocks and we look at our timing and God says, throw out your clock because my clock is a lot different from you. You know, before this crisis, I often told people, one of the problems I have sometimes is I'm in a hurry and God's not. God is working. And God is doing wonderful things. We need to trust in him. And when God says that it's time for this virus to be away, it will be away. This is a very difficult time, and I cannot make light of that. But it's the time that God has placed us in. And just because we may get the coronavirus, it doesn't mean that God has forsaken us. You see, my Savior will never leave me, and he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake us. My life and your life is to bring glory to the very end. Fear is a natural response to things that can hurt us. But I'm not going to let fear dictate how I act. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is my favorite verse. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not in thine understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I don't know how to navigate this. This is new for me and for all pastors and for all of you out there. But I know that we need to take it one step at a time. That we need to let the Lord lead us. That we need to just trust in him. It's kind of like building a bridge. And we're building the bridge and we're putting the boards before us as we make the next, take the next step. I don't know what exactly the next step will be for you or for me, but I know that God does. And as we build these bridges of peace and faith, may we take one step at a time, and may we let the Lord be the master builder. I want us to remember this. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, this virus is not going to destroy us. 
if God is for us, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to offer hope and help to those around us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you will just give comfort and strength to all who hear this message. And Lord, as you taught the Israelites a great lesson of faith, which is trust, I pray that during this difficult time that you will help us to trust. And only trust, but to obey you as your spirit leads us. And Father, we don't have a cloud to lead us by day and by night, but we have something even greater. We have your Holy Spirit in our hearts. I pray that your spirit will comfort us and strengthen us during these difficult times. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will lead us. And Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your word that says, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Lord, may you grant honor and glory. May we praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We look forward to the day when we can hug you and uh, just be with you. But remember this, the Lord is with us. We're never alone because he's always there. God bless you.